Improvise, adapt, survive. Words that are good to contemplate, good to really think about when you go into the woods or when you go anywhere. Survival adaptation is something that begs the question, are you a generalist or a specialist? Now survival in general, most people don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis. However, we're geared for survival. It's in our instinct. It's in the beast part of us to survive. Whether you're in the city or in the woods, we are geared to survive. And a lot of people don't, like they say, they don't think about survival. But in some sense, you really are. Whether it's in the workplace, at home, or on the street, or in the woods, you're thinking in some way about survival. You're making choices, decisions. Do I cross the road now, or do I wait? You know, simple things like that. Do I get into this argument, or do I not? Do I confront this person or not? All these things have to do with survival in some level. However, when you come out here, people who do not think about survival, we call that dinner or prey. You come out here, you have to think about survival in some way. I think it could be said that a person's survival skill set that differentiates them from being a generalist or a specialist is made up of perhaps three different things. Their mind, their will, their intellect, the decisions they've made, how they respond, along with the sum and total of their life experiences, where they've been, what they've done, coupled with their instinct, that beast part of them that reacts naturally without having to think. These three in combination help factor you into the place of generalist or specialist because your, your will and your intellect help make that decision. Also, the things you've learned from your youth. We've all had different experiences. Some people were raised in the urban society. Some people were raised in the suburbs. Some people were raised in the country, some on farms, some in the woods and wilderness areas. And those experiences that we take from our youth are going to help hone us towards who we are. Okay, there's certain skills and there's certain ways that people who are brought up on farms or brought up in the wilderness, there's certain skills and certain ways that they have that are very hard to pass on because they've learned it from their youth and it's almost second nature to them. It's natural. They respond to, say, animals in a certain way that others don't understand. They, they can't quite react in the same way because they have not been exposed in the same way. In our modern world, we seem to have more specialists than anything else. In fact, for a while I served as a specialist. I was a hazard specialist. But, uh, <laughs> in nature, there are generalists and specialists, and this helps determine who survives better. See, the generalists you can place just about anywhere and they have a general knowledge of a lot of things but a specialist is focused primarily on certain things and when you take them out of their element they can have difficulties and that is part of what enables some species to thrive and survive and continue whereas others that were specialized in certain environments had decline and eventually extinction. And we see that today in our world. A lot of deadfalls and the twigs on the ground making a lot of noise, but I'm talking anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, in our modern world, we have different animal species that are on the decline. In fact, some are on the brink of extinction where they're endangered, and that's because their environment is being impacted by man, and they are unable to adapt because they specialize in certain things. They're unable to adapt and move and improvise in their environment. So they end up losing the battle for life. Whereas some specialists actually, because of their specialty, and it's rare, but because of their specialty, they're in a place where man doesn't go and they're able to survive that way. But a generalist, for the most part, something that's able to be an herbivore as well as a carnivore, 
an omnivore, something that could eat a wide variety of plants and animals, something that could deal with the heat and the cold, okay, something that could improvise, something that can move and adapt to mankind closing in on it. These are the generalists who thrive very well. Things like deer and skunk and fox and opossum and raccoon and now bear. Uh, some of your specialists would be endangered species like specialists would be things like your timber rattler. Uh, dense in certain areas when its dense sites are disturbed they have minimal chance of survival. But even though a timber rattlesnake might be at a disadvantage through its specialized living arrangement, it does have a specialized advantage. It can seek its mate and its prey through an invisible trail, a scent trail. It can also strike very accurately its prey through its pits. It is a pit viper a specialized organ that enables it to have an edge over other creatures. So being a specialist does have its advantages, but it also can come with some very big disadvantages. that I really admire in the animal kingdom is, believe it or not, the turkey vulture because it has a makeup that enables it to specialize in feeding off the dead. So your loss is their gain and they're very specialized in it. Their ability to see and smell for a very long distance enables them to locate their food and once they found it, because they have no feathers or hair on their face and neck, they don't pick up diseases as others might. Probably one of the best generalists out there that I could think of are the canine. Now canine were able to go from being completely wild thousands and thousands of years ago to not only living near man and off of man, but to living with man and doing it quite well. Just think about how many different areas of the world canine live in apart from man. From the coldest, wettest areas to the driest, hottest areas. They seem to uh, fit in quite well. Then there's rats and cockroaches. Of course, cockroaches like warm weather, but go to the coldest places and you'll find them in buildings and in sewers and places like that. So yeah, generalists. This is a site I've been looking for all summer. See how well he camouflages in with the leaves? This is a box turtle. This is an eastern box turtle. I haven't seen this one in this area before. In fact, I haven't seen any for the past couple years. Now there is one that I've seen in this area for the past 10 or 12 years. It's got a big tumor on the side of its head that I would see every other year, I guess, I'd see it coming through this way. But I'm gonna put this one back and let it do its thing. Beautiful, beautiful turtle. Look how well it camouflages in with the surroundings. When it comes to humans, the specialists might seem more advanced, more able to uh, cope with change, the advancement of society, etc. However, the generalist can be more grounded, more in touch with the earth, more in touch with nature, and more able to change as the planet changes and our ecosystem changes. So if you were dropped down in the middle of a forest that you were unfamiliar with, with different trees, different terrains, would your knowledge and skill set still enable you to survive? So are you a generalist or a specialist? Now a specialist, they might be an expert at making a bow and drill set, for example, in the area that they come from. Or they might be an expert at finding water in the terrain 
that they walk. Let's go drop down somewhere else, say in a dry piney oak forest. Would that same set of skills, would that same knowledge serve you well? Probably not. You're going to have to learn other things other than expert skill sets and expert knowledge in one specific area and of one specific type. You're going to have to become a generalist. Now specialist skills are very valuable. They will serve you well, but no one's an expert everywhere. There's very few. So learning general skills, being a generalist, will enable you to adapt, improvise, and survive, no matter where you're placed. There's an expression that goes like this. We need to shed some light on the situation. And that basically means that things look different in the light than they do in the dark. You know, as the sun goes down and the forest gets dark, things can look a whole lot different. Familiar sights can look completely different. And believe me, the different seasons of the year in the woods will look different to you. So, if you're a fair weather survivalist, if you're someone that just goes out during one time of the year, or certain times of the year, or just on fair days, your skills are going to be very limited. When it comes to generalist versus specialist, in the context of survival skills and survival preparedness, it's the generalist who spends time in the woods during all seasons of the year and practices a variety of skills that's going to be more prepared than the specialist that might go out, say, during hunting season and practice some skills, or the specialist that goes out during fair weather and practices certain skills. The woods are going to be a whole lot different in the winter time than they are in the autumn, and they're going to be a whole lot different in the dead of summer than they are in the winter time when hunters go out, and so on and so forth. So these are things that have to be considered. With survival skills in particular, the specialist can say, this is who I am, this is what I do, I'm really good at it, and you can learn a lot from me. Whereas the journalist says, life is a journey. I'll put my hands to many things. I'm willing to try anything. I've not yet perfected anything and I'm open to learning from others.